SpaceX modification of the Starship is going smoothly and what engineers have done on this beast speaks louder than voice and everything looks way unique and spectacular more than anyone would imagine. The past explosion was not a child's play, hence SpaceX is reaching every angle of technology to make sure the launch mount mechanism is in the perfect condition to withstand any impact that may arise during the next test. So. SpaceX has to go all in to do the unthinkable to innovate new techniques on another level compared to what we always see in other space companies. Stick around as we explore some unthinkable techniques SpaceX had to cook up to make the Starship rocket see grace. First things first, we have to applaud and admire the character within SpaceX, whereby they just work quietly without briefing the public until the work is done. Also, there is no big media blabs about how wonderful the work is, and stuff. SpaceX just get on with their work and get it done. And from the look of things, that's what practically outsmart other space companies. NASA, Blue Origin, Boeing, just name the space companies that are very comfortable tooting their own horn in media releases. Whereas results and the guts to get shit done speaks louder for itself. So, that on the whole, stands out for SpaceX. And one more thing, SpaceX is open to innovative suggestion from other expertise and they judiciously try to correct any flaws coming from an end user. This made us find SpaceX honest and trustworthy. SpaceX are willing to show all aspects of their endeavors and their failures to launch the most powerful rocket yet. Now, let's give it a quick recall. Many years ago, SpaceX tested the Falcon booster and it failed a few times. They got so much information regarding the failures, both from in-house and third parties, and led to the quick modification of the Falcon 9, and the issues were sorted out. The result is that Falcon 9 Block 5 launches and recovery are now a regular event. Hence, SpaceX don't have to do any guesswork about the launch by trying to observe if any Falcon 9 launch will be successful or not. They just go ahead to commence the launch since they so much believe in the reliable innovative integrity that has been showered on the Falcon 9 rocket. And that will be the same scenario for the Starship. Remember that SpaceX has chosen to use the hot staging concept, which, in contrast to conventional staging where rockets are stacked on top of each other, involves igniting the next stage's engines while attached to the previous stage. Hot staging represents a groundbreaking advancement in rocket design that has the potential to revolutionize spaceflight. This results in a smooth transition between stages as the engines of the upper stages light up before those of the lower stages separate. Since it is a new generation prototype, the final hot stage assembly that will be merged with Booster 9 has certain particular advantages. Now that we've discussed one benefit of implementing the hot staging concept in the launch procedure, it's critical to draw attention to the potential to increase payload capacity. Elon Musk stated that switching to hot staging would end up in a 10% increase in payload capacity because there would no longer be a need to carry extra hardware for stage separation and ignition. So, because of that, more room and waste could be devoted to satellite cargo. Another advantage of hot staging that cannot be overemphasized is the potential for quick and frequent launches. In contrast, conventional staging requires long post-separation maneuvers in space between stages in order to ensure safe ignition, which reduces the frequency of launches with hot staging. The transfer is seamless, giving aids for faster turnaround times between missions and a higher launch cadence. However, in order to successfully use this hot staging technique, there are certain requirements requirements that should be put into consideration to avoid any damage to the upper stage during the key moment of launch. Right now, SpaceX must make sure that the booster is properly covered from the exhaust of the Starship sitting on top of the booster during ignition just before separation takes place. With SpaceX's innovative approach, the hot staging structure is still being prepared and installed. This is a notable technical accomplishment deserved of commendation. SpaceX is not only improving on the hot staggying process, but the company is also also making outstanding progress on the gigantic Starship project, including the most recent development of Booster 9. On July 19, the Booster 10 finished its cryogenic testing at Massey, while the Booster 9 commenced a crucial full cryo test on July 24. A total of 3,000 tons of liquid nitrogen, including liquid oxygen, were injected into the tanks, which were around 69 meters tall and 9 meters wide, during this test. To give you a picture imagination of how large the Starship's tank is, it took about about two hours to fill it with the equivalent amount of cryogenic propellant to that will possibly fill half an Olympic-sized swimming pool. That's outrageously large. As usual, the extremely cold liquid nitrogen too was minus 320 Fahrenheit or minus 
196 Celsius and it quickly chilled the 4 mm thick steel tanks of the booster to cryogenic temperatures, freezing the moisture directly from the humid Texas air and coating nearly the entire tank with ice. SpaceX immediately removed the fuel from Booster 9. Haven observed that there was no leakage in both the liquid nitrogen or oxygen tank. So, because of this test, any planned road closures were cancelled, and that shows how much SpaceX is getting ready for other necessary testing. Now, try to flash your mind back to all those years when the early SN prototypes were all panel beat roughly with some really messy welds and even in some cases needing what Elon described in one very old tweet as the persuasion hammer just to achieve the ring segments and for them to fit together properly. It is amazing just how far SpaceX has come in terms of refining this really neat and elegant manufacturing process of building the ships and boosters up in smaller ring sections and then stacking them all together to have an extremely smooth surface of stainless steel appearance. Very cool imagery and modeling to illustrate how the hot staging redesign looks on Starship and how things might look when it's tested. Hopefully, modification at Starbase will continue to move very fast, the FAA will grant SpaceX a launch license, and will be ready for the second orbital test flight in the very near future. We should be excited to see how things had changed at Starbase. However, one more modification that feels too deep to consider. According to fans, SpaceX could upgrade the Starship to a deep taste by installing solar on its body so that it can power the vessel on its way to Moon or Mars. Additionally, the Starship's top was fitted with solar panels in a similar design to those on the bottom, tilted slightly to collect part of the sun's energy. While traveling to the ISS, the Moon, and Mars, where of course there will be the sun's rays. This is just a quick idea to add some more power. Another shield double layer was added to the top of the starship where the second stage ship at the top will be sitting, something that looks triangular and at the same time, cylindrical, glad to see the added latex layer for the hot staging. This concept was first done by the Russians, and there is a reason the Russians did a triangulated lattice. That is because triangles are more rigid and less likely to twist and collapse because of the triage reinforcement. The parallel struts are likely to begin harmonic oscillations due to the sonic transmission of the rocket blast also being an oscillation. And with the amount of compression provided by thrust and the mass of the upper stage, that oscillation is likely to become one-sided but will gradually collapse in flight. A pictorial example is like building a carport roof on posts with no braces. The wind oscillations would take it down. So, it is recommended that a triangular-based structure be used where every other opposing triangle is shield or more layers are added, actually they should be truncated and be trapezoidal. This would allow roughly half the diameter open, and they could be taller and slightly more acute in angle if more vent area is needed. Now, the Starship will be better off rigid at best at around 20% even triangulated, without sacrificing the weight, thrust, and oscillation factors, especially with parallel structure, that has to struggle with wind turbulence. However, many mysteries about space innovation have come to stay in our real world. For instance, many years ago, sci-fi films showed rockets taking off and landing again. But today, it's no longer science fiction, it's science fact. And the Starship is heading to space without any barrier. What other challenges do you think the Starship will face in up there in space?